everybody, welcome back to Hard for Games. I'm Tony, and today we're doing a very special episode. We are beta questing The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Now, for those of you that are unaware, maybe new to the channel, beta questing is where we dive into the code of the game to find unused attacks, animations, areas, items, all sorts of stuff the developers left in the code but didn't actually use in the game for whatever reason. Now, we brought along new John here today because I'm a little bit less familiar with Wind Waker. Tony, you haven't no, played any Wind Waker. I, 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 you haven't even left Outset Island. That's why I'm here. And our special guest, okay, Lady Helvick. Here. We live. Focus good. Okay. Alrighty. Hi guys, my name is Lady Pelvic with Pelvic Gaming, and thank you so much for having me on the channel. I really appreciate it. And I'm also super excited to be beta questing one of my favorite Legend of Zelda titles ever. But first, let me get comfortable. Uh, Alright. Now I am hard for games. You can always be hard for games in your heart. Before we get started here, I wanted to give a big thank you to Melon Speedruns. Now, this individual trained us on how to actually access these areas. Uh, could not have done it without him. He is very involved in hacking Wind Waker, and he showed us quite a few things that we're really excited to show you guys today. Let's go straight into the Tower of the Gods. So first up, this is possibly an unused boss room. Now, I say possibly because nobody actually really knows, except for the developers, of course. It's big, it's open, there's nothing in it, so it makes sense that, you know, it would, would have been utilized for that purpose. I also really like the colors in here, like the sort of, the blues, damn, beautiful. So one thing I find hilarious is the levitation code. It's just kind of like, where are you going? If that roof wasn't there, wouldn't you just eventually hit some kind of invisible barrier? But it can be really confusing because you're so far away from the ground that you don't really know whether you're still levitating. Mm -hmm. You're just kind of in this like horrible void, basically. Uh, and the reason why we use levitation is because we want full access to the areas we're exploring. And we want to be able to freak you out. This next area I find particularly interesting. It's an unused bell tower originally for the very top of the tower, as bell towers are often on the top of towers. I guess you probably could have come <laughs> to that conclusion yourselves. Bell towers only tops. Yep. Tops. Strip tops. Strip, yeah, power top. There's no room like this in the final build of the Tower of the Gods whatsoever. So we actually also came across a test dungeon where you test out the skull hammer. Mm -hmm. When you slam down on a peg, it actually pops up another peg. Yeah, so this mechanic does not exist in the playable retail version of the game. I'm actually really bummed that they didn't keep this because this is kind of part of Zelda's charm is puzzle solving. So fun fact, you know who's a huge supporter of my channel? Tingle. I have many devout followers, but none of them have an entire room with my logo in it. So I don't want to be a downer, but I think that actually might not be the reason why it was created. Currently in the game, uh, you can't access this area, but uh, we believe it, it currently exists to just allow the programmers to manipulate textures. So we're going to actually go ahead and reset it back to what it originally looked like. And you just prepare to um, just, just be horrified. Just, it's, it's, it's just friggin' it's awful. It's, every, it's awful. So at first the art room looks really bizarre with the green faces, but the more I examined it, it looked like River Zoras from Link to the Past or Link Between Worlds. I contemplated if they were going to bring Zoras back, even though we're in an ocean instead of a river, or I'm just overthinking it. Now we mentioned that texture manipulation and experimentation was the final and ultimate potential, I mean it's all speculation, purpose of the room. But that doesn't mean that it was originally meant to be that, because this is actually Tingle's secret room. Secret room. Secret room. An unused room at the very top of his tower. Speculation, you say? 
let me prove it otherwise. Exhibit A. Probably the easiest connector is what happens when you exit the room. Well, here we are. And here's Tingle's Tower. Next up, look at the windows here. Now, don't these windows look familiar? They're the same ones that you see on the outside of the tower. Mm -hmm. And lastly, you know, this one takes a little bit of digging, but the game internally refers to Tingle as Tinkle, that's T-I-N-C-L-E, uh, which just so happens to be the name of the room in the files. So, an unused room in Tingle's Tower of Horrors. Now, did you know the ending of Wind Waker, like the actual cutscene that you see, isn't an in-game cutscene. It's actually like a movie file that you're watching, uh, which is weird because like, for example, in Ocarina of Time, when there's a cutscene, it's all like in-game. You're not watching anything pre-rendered, I guess would be the best way to describe it. But in this, it's like a strange combination of both. Nintendo, for whatever reason, didn't want to just do an in-game cutscene. So they did one and then they like recorded it and then they dubbed in sound effects and music later which is why what you're about to see is just so weird sounding. Hmm. Now, I don't know why they didn't just use the game engine to play it out in a nice, crisper, less compressed version, yeah. but for some reason that's what they did. It was a weird method that they used and what you're about to see doesn't feel complete because they overdubbed it and like added things in post. Uh, so what you're seeing is the original, which is just, I don't know why they did it this way, but before you watch this weird cutscene, to avoid spoilers, if you haven't beaten this game and you don't want to see the ending cutscene, scrub forward to this timestamp and you'll avoid spoilers. Spoiler alert, we're showing the end cutscene in case you haven't picked that up. It's the end cutscene, which is the end of the game. It's a cutscene at the end of the game. It's a spoiler. The true ending of Wind Waker goes something like this. Ganon's destroyed, the world is saved, the crew is here to pull me and Tetra out from the sea. Any time now. You know, just throw us a rope when you have a second. I know you have rope up there because I had to swing from them to get a damn item. Can't stay above water forever. I'm not Tetra and have ungodly stamina for some reason. Okay, I'm dead. And after you die, it gets even better because you become Jesus Link. You can walk on water and apparently climb on air. Bet they didn't tell you that in the Holy Scriptures. You may be wondering, okay, like, what just actually happened there? Basically, like we said, it's an in-game cutscene that Nintendo turned into a movie. Well, we watched too far, right? Mm. So it ended. We're, we're past the ending cutscene. And Link can't stay in water for very long, so he dies. But the game doesn't really know what's going on or where he is, so he respawns onto an island that the game thinks is there, but we don't see it represented visually. Beta questing. It's a hell of a drug. Not even once. No. 
This next cutscene is the epilogue, and for whatever reason, Nintendo did the exact same thing here. And we happen to be playing a file where Link doesn't have the King of Red Lions yet, so you can see he just, like, drops right into the water. Like, he, he should, in this cutscene, be in his boat, but instead he just plumps right down. Now, Nintendo gave a huge amount of wait time with ambient noises, wind in the water, and all mm, that stuff. Nothingness. Yeah. About five minutes of nothingness. Mm-hmm. Anyways, after the scene ends, we actually get to explore the island and see things that we wouldn't be able to before. And it's completely jacked up. I have to admit, this was such a bizarre moment to see in the game. Everything felt broken. Characters were saying dialogue from earlier moments in the game. What? She, she's right there. Like, floating for some reason. Here's an oddity. Did you notice the pots in the background at the beginning of the cutscene? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. They're just pots after all. Ordinary pots. But when you're exploring outside island in the game, no pots. Just an open area next to a house. So why are they in a cutscene? Why does it even matter? Nintendo may have created a build of the island with a certain layout, used it for a cutscene, then changed it later in the actual game. Since the differences were so minor, they probably didn't even care to re-record the epilogue. So the pot placement you see in the cutscene is a beta placement, because we're exploring an earlier layout of the island. Big props to Sage of Mirrors. Uh, the stuff that we actually just showed you was discovered by him, so thank you for that. I also found some ominous test room to play with item placement and layouts. Also to expand on the new puzzles like this eye platform, which is probably the earlier version of the eye platform that we know today. More than likely, just like in any Zelda game, you probably have to shoot the eye to move the platform. Now if you pay close attention, you'll notice that the true villain of Wind Waker is revealed, and that is none other than the Sickly Booger Kid. You'll see several portraits of the sickly child, with urns right in front of it, probably filled with the snot of his enemies. You know, Link, if I saw that, I too would bounce. Now you may have noticed that this footage has actually been in 16x9, in glorious HD. HD, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Yet somehow it's 16x9, but it's not stretched. So th this is because Melon Speedrun set us up with his own specialized settings. So again, big thank you for that because it looks amazing. Now we understand some of your, your purists out there might be horribly, horribly offended by this. Uh, so here are some beta elements in classic 4x3. Still emulated because, uh, I mean, I can't please everybody. Get over yourselves. Go complain about lag and smash brothers or something i don't know no it's the controller it's the eye yeah, <laughs> <laughs> did you buy a mad cats first up on our four by three paradise we've got an unused bird yeah we actually like to call this bird the technicolor bird i don't really know the actual name of it uh but we're gonna actually use a hack to replace all of the seagulls with this really vibrant beautiful bird now that doesn't mean that all the birds in the game we're supposed to be this Technicolor bird? No, not at all, yeah. We're just using the birds to replace. We're just replacing birds with birds. <laughs> birds with birds just to show you guys to make it easy. And if you look here, like, they're really pretty. Like, they're very oh, yeah. bright and green and reds and it's great. It works well with the color palette of the game. Yes, and keep in mind that this bird could have been used anywhere. Any guess we have is complete speculation. Seagulls were used to explore out-of-place reaches for Link. Whereas this bird, I'm not sure what it could have been used for. Maybe the same thing, but maybe its neon feathers lit up a dark spot, or could carry certain things that seagulls couldn't. Maybe it was a rare bird by the off chance instead of getting a seagull, you got this bird. Maybe it attacked, it just did things that a seagull could not do. It can go any direction, really. So here's a little fun treat for you guys. Here we have the Dark Knight statue, which is probably beta as it doesn't look like the ones you see in the Temple of Time. However, I just want to point out who's nearby this dark being. Tell you guys I'm onto something. On Alset Island, there's a mysterious chandelier, and as it turns out, it's actually... Chandelier, the fire ghost Pokemon, being consumed in chandelier's flames 
burns up the spirit and leaves the body behind. So next up is, is less of a beta element and more of sort of a development leftover. It's like a debug memory test. It's really the most technical thing that we found mm -hmm. so far. Notice the bars jumping around to the bottom. It's totally dependent on what Link is actually doing. Yeah, we're not exactly sure what everything in it means. Yeah, and especially when you pull up this menu here, there's all of this memory information. Again, useful for the developers, but we're not 100% sure if you know what it is, please tell us. I would be interested in, in finding out what the hell is happening. So lastly, there's this really cool thing that Melon Speedruns showed us that I personally haven't seen anywhere else before. Mm. It's a wireframe from an area where we've never really been before just playing the game through. Now, if we explore a little bit, we can actually find some areas that were present in the 2001 Space World trailer. And we can see here that we have this log with these little mushrooms growing in it. And that's from Looks this... awfully familiar. Yeah, it looks awfully familiar. It's from this part of the trailer right here. So, and actually we're going to show you a, a couple of versions where he was actually able to add like texture and fog. The texture and fog ones look really cool and really creepy like a ghost town. Because it kind of is like a ghost town because they didn't <laughs> use it, right? But this isn't the way that it appears in the actual file. Again, there's just so much with Wind Waker that is left over, that we, even stuff we didn't get the opportunity to show you guys, because unlike, you say like Ocarina, where you're dealing with a smaller amount of space, they were like, oh my God, disc-based media? <laughs> eh, don't delete anything. Screw it. Keep it in there. No one's gonna ever see it, you know. Mm. Little did they know, we have lots of time on our hands. So that is our Legend of Zelda, the Wind Waker beta quest. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to vote on what game you want to see us beta quest next. Mm -hmm. We always tally those things up and that determines what we play and what we beta quest. Uh, so again, big thank yous here. Melon speed runs. Oh my God, so patient. Oh, Helping yeah. us out. We were big noobs on this. Yes, very much so. Much more familiar with beta questing the N64 than the GameCube. So thank you so much. Uh, Big thank you to the Cutting Room Floor. They are a website that has a lot of this beta information. Just a gold mine of information for beta questing. Mm -hmm. It is the Encyclopedia Britannica of beta questing, if encyclopedias were still profitable and could exist. The Encyclopedia Dramatica, if you will. Dram if you will, yes. And of course, obviously, big thank you to Lady Pelvic and the Pelvic Gaming Channel for joining us. You know, I checked out her channel for the first time, I don't know, like a half year ago, and criminally underrated. Mm. You guys really should check it out. Uh, so please do if you get the opportunity to do it's so. It's way better than hard for games. I would, <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. A small channel trying to break into the YouTube industry. And for those out there watching, if you want to get on Tingle's level of fandom, be sure to subscribe to Pelvic Gaming and my Let's Play channel, Pelvic Plays. I do a lot of reviews, top five videos, Let's Plays, and convention vlogs. And to Tony, New John, thank you so much for the opportunity. Cheers. Uh, is she just gonna let me drown or? Okay, that's. <laughs> Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share, and we will see you guys next time.